protection from the outside. We know what she can do down low. You see the energy right there. Unique Thompson, I always say, like, she is, you hear the eye of the tiger? Well, she's the heart of the tiger tonight. Eye of the tiger, I like that. That works. They're going to need that eye to be really sharp here tonight. She will rely on the help of Honesty Scott Grayson, Romy Levy, Jayla Jordan. It can't j just be unique, but Coach Flo was telling us earlier today that Unique needs to step up. She went for 10 points and 10 rebounds last time out in the loss to Alabama. Needs to be better here tonight. Opening tip is controlled by Texas A&M, and they are underway at Auburn Arena. Jordan Nixon runs the point, and there is Thompson coming out to get a deflection early. Nixon will try it from the outside. Long rebound to Aaliyah Wilson and a second chance here early for AM. And they go right to Sierra Johnson for her first two. And it's going to be important tonight. As you look at this Auburn team, they, their defense, they love to switch up their defense, but they got to figure out ways to box out. Elena Rice getting a start here tonight. Kia Patton a start as well. So Auburn mixing it up a little bit here this evening. Honesty Scott Grayson averaging, as we showed you a moment ago, almost 14 points a game in conference. Wilson, Nixon, Kayla Wells, Jones, Johnson, the starting five for the Aggies, come in 14 and one overall, five and one in the SEC, and a three-second violation, a turnover for Texas A&M. Texas A&M, what they like to do, they're moving the ball, they're doing a great job of being patient. That's something that Coach Blair said, he wants the team to be patient on the offensive end, find the right shot. If you're not open, make the pass, make that extra pass, and they've done, so, they've done well so far. Thompson is not a three-point shooter, so she'll keep it moving around the perimeter. Levy not afraid to try the three. Can't get it, and there's the rebound for Jones. I expect to see Romy Levy more aggressive tonight than James Sunday. You could tell at halftime, Coach Flo definitely had a talk with her. She came out with more aggression looking at the basket, so expect her to look at the basket sooner. Levy came to give a little help on the defensive end. That impacted Sierra Johnson. Auburn struggles to score 65 points a game. That's 13th in the conference. Well, Jones finds the tough going in the paint. Patton getting the start, had not played in the previous three games. Auburn, of course, is a team that's really been battling through COVID protocol pauses a couple times this season. And looks like They've got 14 dressed here tonight, if you can believe it. Maybe a little too unselfish there from Sierra Johnson. Oh, you and love the way. With the Aggies. And you love the way just Texas A&M, you said a little unselfish, but that's kind of what they've done to be successful. I mean, they got the most wins in the NCAA with 14, but they move the ball. They play well together. They find the open shot. Sierra Johnson, when she's down low and she's attacking, She's great, India Jones, Kayla Wells. I mean, the list goes down, and then you bring the bench in, and it just keeps going. But they, they just, I mean, they do such a great job of finding those open players. Cold start for the Aggies from the field. They are one for six. They come in second in the conference at 48 percent. Odyssey Scott Grayson coming off the team high 17 against Alabama last time out. She's playing with a ton of confidence right now for the Tigers. This is what Auburn does off the make. They'll get the defense dialed up, try to turn you over, and Unique Thompson took a hard hit. Unique Thompson stepped up on that back line. A little bit too close, going to get called for that foul. A hard foul right there. Wilson was fouled, the reach in by Scott Grayson. Auburn, number Auburn last time out lost at Alabama by 12. The Tide scored the game's first 11 points, never gave up the lead. So one of the keys for Auburn today is just being focused and locked in in those first five minutes. Well, I think the difference, too, is the shot selection. The shot that they've taken thus far have actually been good shots. I think one thing they have to do is they have to establish themselves down low, though. When you got Unique Thompson, you got to find a way to get the ball in her hand, get her going, get her some touches, and then work inside and then work to the outside. 
Thompson rips away her first rebound, and here come the Tigers. Patton will try it again from outside. That won't go down, and Johnson calls it in. As we see, Texas A&M has missed their last six shots. See what they do on this possession, but going back to Auburn, making it a point to get the ball down low. You think Thompson deflected that pass. It will remain Aggie basketball. Terry Williams Fenoy, ninth season now at Auburn. Yeah, as Auburn, five, we've talked five, about seven, over the last couple of weeks, Tamika, it has just five, been a roll call at practice every single day. How many players do we have available? She said this Tuesday was the fullest practice they've had in a couple of months. They are missing Kaye White, who's out with an injury, but outside of that, everyone was good to go in practice, which they have been unable to do at Auburn. Well, and I think when you look at that, if you think about it, they have 10 newcomers on their team trying to figure out how to play players. I mean, this is the first time she's really had the opportunity to have a full squad, even in practice, for people to be able to play in the position that they're designed to play in. Kaye White's missed the most time. She suffered a knee injury just four minutes this season was hurt against South Alabama. That's what Unique Thompson does, just won't drop for. Kayla Wells. Wells will earn a trip to the free throw line. Great job Brown's by Kayla Wells. Line, she just put her head down and attacked the basket. When you don't see Unique Thompson right down, down low underneath the basket, take the ball to the basket, and Kayla Wells does a great job. Nixon finds her on the break. She looks up. Really aggressive. So the first two reserves into the game for Auburn. Aisha Kulabali, the freshman from Mali, is in the game. And Saniya Wells, sophomore from Moss Point, Mississippi. So here is the senior three-year starter for Texas A&M. Just gives you an idea of the experience they have with Johnson and with Wells and with Jones. Wilson having her best year for Gary Blair after battling injuries earlier in her career. And then there's the mix of transfers like Jordan Nixon and Alexis Morris and Destiny Pitts who have fit right into the mix for this Texas A&M team that's a top 10 team. Well, it makes it stronger. And when you think about last season, you think about Kennedy Carter being with this team. This year's team is totally different because they have more of a team focus. Koulibaly for Rice. Two teams are combined two for 17 so far from the field. Slow going at Auburn Arena in the first quarter. Tough drive won't go. Saved nicely by Auburn and a second chance here. Jayla Jordan will try it from outside. Koulibaly hustles after it. She touched it last. I like Kula Bali when, he, when she comes in, one of the things she does, she just goes hard. She's aggressive on the boards, sometimes a little out of control, but I would rather somebody come in and give you the energy off the bench and try to make plays happen. Honestly, Gray, Scott Grayson gets offensive rebound. She comes in, she gets an offensive rebound. That's what Auburn has to do. Johnson turns and Jordan gets called for the foul. Foul is called on Auburn number 14, Taylor Jordan. That's her first and team third. Well, even though Auburn just has the one field goal so far, this is much better energy and defense than what they showed against Alabama in the first five minutes of that game when they fell behind 11-0 and 14-2 out of the blocks as Johnson hits. Sierra, third on the team in scoring. Go ahead, Tamika. Good thing. One thing when you watch Sierra Johnson, even watching her shoot free throws, when you watch her down low, she's always so poised for the most part. You know, she's never, she never gets too high, never gets too low, but she gets the job done. She's been consistent this year. Good job breaking the pressure by Auburn. It results in a hoop by Rice.
as we watch this Auburn team play, one thing that you'll notice is you never really know what defense they're going to come down in. They switch up their defense and almost possession to possession. You might see a 2-3, you might see a man-to-man, -man, you might see a full-court pressure, you'll see a lot of different defenses. And they'll mix up the different types of full-court pressure they'll run, too. Now that they've got the depth in the bodies, they can do it for the full 40. There's Wells back the other way. What's that old saying, too? Well, you're, you're the defensive expert. You know all the old defensive sayings. You know, always press a pressing team. Auburn's a pressing team, and now Texas A&M give them a little bit of their own medicine trying to take it away from them. There's Wilson a little too aggressive with the defense. And she gets called for foul, which will get us to our first timeout. It comes with 3.51 to go in the first quarter. And you just can't say enough. Kayla Wells, hands in, all the way down. She takes it down. Here we go. Texas figure out. You need game. When you have that many new players, you need game to be able to learn how to play with one another. You know, when we talked to Coach Flo, one of the big things she said is, we know what we're going to get from Unique Thompson. Honestly, Scott Grayson has stepped up big time, but they're still searching for that third player on their team that will step up and be a consistent offensive threat. This gives them the time. They're going against great players, great teams. This gives them the time to find that and figure out what, who that's going to be. Andy Hughes comes into the game for Auburn. They get a good look at the basket out of the timeout, but they can't finish it with Koulibaly at the basket. Destiny Pitts into the game. Good shooter, number three for a and &M. Wilson turns, and a foul called on Jones, who took a shot to the face. Well, we saw Unique Thompson take a shot to the face earlier. Uh, in, India Jones, one thing you know about her, no matter where she is, she's coming to find the ball. And you see four <laughs> white jerseys, and all of a sudden you see one maroon jersey and there's of course india jones she's the player i talked about in the open you want her on your team because of the way that she works she just works hard all the time 40 minutes well she's not going to play the full 40 tonight she heads to the bench with her first personal foul Trying to work against that Texas A&M zone. The jumper won't go. There's Pitts falling out of bounds, trying to handle that pass. It'll be a turnover for the Aggies. That's their second. And that's a rare pass by Jordan Nixon, trying to make that cross-court pass to Pitts a little bit too far. Got to make the easy pass sometimes. Kicked by Wells. And he was trying to get the ball down low. Unique Thompson is one of those players that you want her to have touches down low. As the game flows and the game goes down, right now the focus is really on her. But as you go inside, you go outside, it opens up the inside for her to be able to work a little bit more. Offensive foul called on Auburn's Eddie Hughes. Four team fouls now on the Tigers. Here comes the pressure. One thing for Texas A&M, they got plenty of ball handlers, Tamika. They've got four point guards that Gary Blair can work into some kind of rotation. There's Thompson there defensively to deny the entry pass. You followed Auburn, you know they are a defense first team. And they have slowed AM down so far. The question is, can they find some offense? Hughes can't find it from outside. And uh, that's the issue right there for uh, Auburn. Texas AM. Oh, Aaliyah Wilson. Good call for the charge. Offensive foul called on Wilson. That's her second personal foul. So the leading score for Texas A&M has two. And Patton does a great job just getting her feet outside the lane. 
The outside the circle down there. Wilson trying to take it up strong. But you alluded to this earlier, just a couple possessions ago. When one player goes out for Texas A&M, another player steps in. And you look at their bench, you look at the players, you said four point guard, Aaliyah Wilson being one of those players that can handle the ball in full court. So they just keep bringing players at you consistently. And we cannot leave Destiny Pitts open. She knocks down the three. So Wilson to the bench with the two. Zay Green comes in. Thompson lost the handle. Green, baseline. Can't get it. Sierra Johnson rips it away. She can't get the put back. Tyra Lowry for Levy. Now Patton. Scott Grayson will try oh, and knock Scott. down a three. Honesty, Scott Grayson was 0 for 2 from outside the three-point line in her previous two games, but comes up with a much-needed basket for Auburn. <laughs> Levy was committed to the box out. I am here to box out. Someone else get the basketball. Well, that's a smart play because you got to put a body on those players. I mean, even though India Jones is not in the game, I think about Zay Green and what we've seen her do. You know what Sierra Johnson can do. You got to make sure you box out. Texas A&M holding for a final shot up by three. Nixon, so good at taking it to the basket. Can't get it. And that will do it for the first quarter. Well, low scoring first quarter. Texas A&M averaging 79 points a game, held to 11 by Auburn. Destiny Pitts getting involved with the deep three-pointer. Well, Auburn will take that, Tamika. They'll take a rock fight in this kind of game, holding Auburn, A&M rather, to 11 points. Auburn scoring just eight, but Auburn made it tough for Texas A&M. Jones didn't score in the first quarter. Johnson had four. That's been a rough start for both teams. And is it the defense tenacity from them, or is it just they're missing shots? And some might say for Auburn, they've had open shots. Texas A&M has missed a couple of layups. Try to get back on the scoring edge in the second quarter. Reese will try it from the outside, and it's into the hands of Pitts. Pitts will try again from deep. Levy's got the rebound. She's got a good all-around game, this freshman from Israel. And then back the other way. Wells takes it at Levy, who gives the foul. Now it's called number 11, Romy Levy. That's her so Levy first. picks up her first personal foul. Well, this was a huge Thursday of women's college basketball. We're getting ready for a big Sunday, another big Sunday on the SEC Network. Missouri and Kentucky, both winners tonight. We'll get things started at 1 Eastern, noon Central. Then Alabama will take on fourth-ranked South Carolina. The number 22 Georgia will be in College Station to take on these Aggies. It's all right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. What a performance tonight by Chelsea Dungy for Arkansas, going for 37 points. Most ever scored by a UConn opponent as Arkansas took down the third-ranked Huskies 90-87. So Arkansas has a couple of wins this year. Well, that's not very attractive. What are you doing here? I'm trying to talk about a great top 10 there. That's disrespectful to me, young man. Anyways, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, Chelsea Dungy, 37 <laughs> points, 13 of 21 from the field. Two wins for Arkansas against fourth-ranked Baylor and third-ranked UConn. Uh, you could see Chelsea Dungy from the time the whistle blew in the beginning of the game. She was locked in. She had a different, like, fire in her eyes, one that we saw a couple years ago in the SEC tournament. That same fire came back, and I don't know what it was about UConn, but she was lightening up from all over the world.
from inside, from outside, free throw line, did a little bit of everything. Levy lights it up from outside, knocking down the three as the shot clock expired. And this is what Auburn does well. They make you play ugly. They make, uh, on the defensive end, they make you play. The offense struggles because of the different defenses that, it, that they throw at you. But, I mean, you see the shot. Some of the shots are good shots. They're not going in. But Auburn forces you to have to take those tough shots. Auburn has made three three-pointers already here in the first half. They make, on average, four a game. It is not a big part of their offense. They've had open looks tonight. The green. Green dribbles to an opening and scores. That's what you have to do on the offensive end, the way that Auburn plays. Sometimes you got to figure out a way to stretch out the defense so that you can go to the middle of the paint and get those open looks. Zay Green does a great job of just attacking the post. Green in her sixth game. Unique Thompson hasn't gotten a lot of touches so far. She makes the most of that one. Turn around and score, getting her first points. Oh, it's interesting. She's only shot the ball two times, which means one time in the first quarter. We just saw the last shot. So we got to get more touches. Yeah, only three paint touches for her so far. The offense has to flow through her as Pitts answers back with another three. Rice. Shot clock now down to seven. Rice to Levy will try again. Not this time. I've been struggling to try to figure out they're going side to side. You cannot go lateral when you're going against the zone. You've got to go toward the basket and try to drive and kick, and that's how you get those open shots. And an offensive foul called as Honesty Scott Grayson doing all the little things for Auburn takes a charge. Yeah, one of the things that Texas A&M does well when they move the ball, you see right there, that is a player destiny pitch. You cannot afford to leave wide open. And of course, on this flip side, Wells takes it in and Honesty Grayson, Scott, Scott Grayson steps in and takes that charge. Kulabali, back to Thompson. Another three attempted for Auburn. And Johnson made sure Thompson couldn't get to that rebound. Green. Uh, Auburn right now with 16-3 attempt. Rice saw that pass coming and turned it into two. You know, it's interesting. We were talking to Coach Blair the other day. He talked about the start against the Mizzou game, and he wasn't really happy for his team. He, he was really disappointed. You look at a game like tonight, how they have struggled. Texas A&M has struggled to find the right shot, and they've struggled to knock down the open shots that they've had. So I can't imagine. You no, know, we only have, we have five more minutes to go before halftime, but I can't imagine what the halftime speech will be from Coach Blair. They get an open look from outside the three-point line, and Rice knocks down another one. She went for nine against Alabama. Came into this game averaging three and a half points a game. She's got seven tonight. Elena Rice getting the start and taking advantage. Tying the game at 18. Zay Green on the cut. Johnson found her. Tigers will work some clock again inside of five to go before halftime. Uh, they get it inside to Kulabali. Gets her first points. And then a foul is called on Scott Grayson. 
We are tied at 20 in the first half. To and Auburn has, this is what they have done. This is what they do. That defense that they play right there, right, gets that still saw it coming from a mile away. But then, of course, that's on one side, but we can do it on the east. Missouri on Sunday, 70-66. to 66. They had 16 offensive rebounds in that game. Led to 12 second chance points for 16 turnovers. Led to 23 points off those turnovers. So that was a tight game against Mizzou on the road. And AM's got a tight one here in the first half against the Tigers. Well, Auburn forces you to play ugly. They force you to do uncharacteristic things because of the way they're just aggressive. They change defenses. They just make you have to think before you actually do. And I think the Mizzou game for Texas A&M was a good test. But honestly, we haven't seen the best of Auburn yet. Tonight they have 14. Last couple games they've had 12. They've had nine. They've had seven. But every single game they're getting better and better. First points for Jones after missing her first three field goal attempts puts A&M back in front. Alexis Morris back into the game. Now, Gary Blair says when she's put into the game, he wants AM's tempo to get dialed way up. So we'll see if they're able to do that with Morris on the floor. And a foul called on Auburn. Taking back to the first main basket for Dia Jones. And Dia Jones. That player, she's able to knock it down, down low. Most of the time you see her around the basket, but her range, she's been able to step out a little bit more this year and show us the range. 14 points, 18 rebounds. It was the seventh time in her career that she hit the 18 rebound mark doing it against Missouri on Sunday. Now, rebounding is all about heart. When you watch India play, you can tell she leaves everything on the court every single night. I mean, she hustles the way she hustles, the way she plays. I love watching hustle players. You know that. So seeing her on the floor, seeing her jump around, she'll be on one end on the offense, do, do something on the offensive end, turn around on the defensive end, make a steal, do some great things. Annie Hughes. That's only Levy knocking down her second three-pointer. So she's made two threes. And Auburn's in front by one. Morris dribbled through traffic. Jones, as Tamika was just mentioning, working hard. Rips down the rebound. Scores around Thompson. And one thing about this Auburn team, you see the threes, they just stuttering for a lot of threes. They knock down a couple of them, but they have yet to really look at Unique Thompson. When she has the one-on-one -on -one matchup, it's, you got to get her the ball. Ooh. They do. The double comes from Jones, and a foul is called on Thompson. So good oh. defense. By Texas A&M, draw the foul on Thompson. And she knew it was the foul. You saw that smile. Reminds me the the lipstick reminds me of Tina Thompson. And I watched Unique Thompson play, but definitely she, she knew it. As soon as the foul came. First foul on Unique Thompson. And Morris draws the contact. We talked repeatedly about getting the ball down low to Unique Thompson on the one-on-one -on -one matchup. Got to get the ball down there sooner, but India Jones comes over and able to get that foul on Unique. Well, Morris will go to the free throw line. Morgan Robinson Wagu will come into the game. Sophomore from Norcross, Georgia, as Rice checks out. She's got two personal fouls. She picked up that foul on Morris. Kulabali also with two as Morris knocks down the first. Friday night heights tomorrow night on the SEC Network. Our doubleheader starts in Gainesville, number one Florida, hosting Missouri at 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Then it's 6 ranked Arkansas, number 10 Georgia 
on the SEC Network and also on the ESPN app. So the officials are kind of di directing traffic and calling a foul. Is there a foul here? You know, Levy goes for a tumble. Foul is called on Texas a number 40, Sierra Johnson. Johnson picks up the foul. She's the one made contact with Levy. And I don't even think Johnson felt Levy down there. <laughs> so Levy tried to step in and box out. You know, Sierra didn't look down. Break the pressure again. They go to the three-point line. Already 23-point attempts tonight for Auburn. Three-point game with 2.12 to go. Now it's interesting. Auburn is shooting five for 20 from the three-point line. And I'm still trying to figure out at what point do you start attacking the basket? Get the ball down to Unique Thompson. Make some cut toward the basket. Work inside, then work outside. Foul on Morris. Third team foul on the Aggies. There's a seventh turnover for Auburn as Jones will finish. Scott Grayson trying to weave through traffic. Gets caught up in traffic and a traveling violation is called on Auburn's Robinson Wagyu. So AM a chance here to make a little run late in the second quarter. Well, oh, AM had picked up their defense and she's one of the main reasons. India Jones with the steal on the way to the offensive end, but you could tell the defensive energy had picked up players on the floor, the scramble. One, two, three players down. And Texas A&M gets the ball back. Morris steps up and knocks down a three. Played three minutes against Mizzou. Didn't score after not playing in the previous four games. Getting some quality time here late in the first half. And count it. And the foul, Patton. And if that foul was on Sierra Johnson, that would be her second foul. Number 40, Sierra Johnson, is her second. It is, and it is. So Johnson with two, Wilson with two. Ella Tokiona. Johnson will check out. Yeah, I think that's what Auburn, if they want to beat the Texas A&M Aggie team, they got to attack the basket. They got the athletes, they got the players, but they're struggling for a lot of threes. You know, this will give you an idea of how they have gone to the outside. That was the first free throw attempt for Auburn tonight. Jones with a nice little drive to the basket. In the game against Alabama, Honestly, Scott Grayson attempted eight free throws. She was the only Auburn player to attempt a free throw. Unique Thompson didn't get to the line. So the first free throw attempt tonight comes from Patton with the N1. Well, that's all about attacking the basket and forcing the defense to play you. You can tell early in the game, early in the second quarter, they were going side to side. They passed on the ball. They were cutting, but they were just passing the ball side to side. When they started going toward the basket and attacking, you force the defense to have to make a decision whether you go up and get the AM or get to the free throw line, or you get a dish out to a wide open shooter on the outside. Or in this case, you draw a hand check foul at the top of the key, which is the fifth team foul, and you get a couple of free throws. There's a lot of different ways to get to the free throw line, apparently. <laughs> That's not the one that you mentioned that just happened right there. But I'm sure Auburn will take it. Oh, yeah. Just can't make it in the first attempt from Scott Grayson. Final minute, second quarter. 
Alyssa Steffi Drea standing by in studio to go through just a jam-packed, exciting night of women's college basketball. Another three-point attempt. Scott Grayson can't hit it. That is three-point attempt number 21 of the first half for the Tigers. Mixon with 10. With 7. With 4. Drops it back out. Wells, wide open look. Can't hit at the buzzer, and that will do it for the first half. Well, Texas A&M made four of their last five field goal attempts in the closing moments of that second quarter to stretch it out to a six-point lead at halftime. Let's go to the student. The Tamaxi she played with, it lifted everybody else up. Yeah, she was the spark on that 11-4 run to close out that first half, but Auburn had the defense going in the first half when they took that one-point lead in the second quarter. Well, this is what Auburn does. They force you to play in ways that you're not comfortable. They bring the press when they want to. They take it away when they want to. But then, of course, on the flip side, I just mentioned India Jones. India Jones really was the one person that you know, stepped up on the offensive end, on the defensive end, eight points right now, shooting four for seven. She was aggressive. She moved. Her versatility, I mean, all the things we talked about in the beginning of the game, India Jones came out and proved like why she's one of those players to watch. 8.7 rebounds for Jones. Remember, she didn't score in the first quarter. A turnover to start the third quarter, and it turns into points for Honesty Scott Grayson. She had seven in the first half. She has a team-high nine. You see the shooting in the first quarter and the second quarter. Jones with the eight and seven. Scott Grayson and Rice with 14 points combined of the 27 and a jump ball. Possession arrow will give it to Auburn. Inside of those numbers, Tamika, shooting for Auburn. They were 5 of 21 from outside the three-point line and 5 of 9 inside the three-point line. So there's no question they were jacking up threes in that first half. I think that's the thing that Auburn has to do. They got to figure out a way to get the ball down low in the paint. Unique Thompson only two point one for three in the first half. That just means you're not getting her the ball down low. Not that she has to score every single time, but the ball needs to touch her hand. They get her a touch inside out to Levy, who pulls up and can't connect. Well, A&M had the lead at halftime without getting one point from their leading scorer, Aaliyah Wilson, who gets an assist right here. Feeding it inside to Jones. Wilson picked up two fouls in the first quarter and contributes with an assist to put A&M on top by six. I think that's the versatility of this Texas A&M team, the players that come in, whether you start or you come off the bench, they fit into the flow of what Coach Blair wants his team to do. Aaliyah Wilson, it's not about her getting the opportunity to shoot. She does a great job of setting her teammates up to be able to score. Thompson bobbled it, got it back, stuck with it, got it in the foul. Luke Thompson down low. I love how she continues to fight for the ball. Get down low, talk about this one first. On the offensive end for Texas A&M, Aaliyah Wilson, but Unique Thompson. How she battles down low. Talked about the touches and being able to get it to her. Relentless. Well, last year she broke the Wanna Bonner's double double record. And now she's past the third ball of great on the all time rebounding list for the Tigers. That's her second and the team first. Remember in the first half, she had a clash of heads. She ran into Jordan Nixon. She looks like a heavyweight fighter right now with the with the fat lip. Like, let's go. Cut me, Mick. Let's go. Yeah. But don't put me on the bench, coat. <laughs> I'm not going to come out. Uh. Honestly, Scott Grayson knocks down another three. That is her third. And I love the confidence that she's playing with right now. She, is, she stepped into that shot. You know she's going to score. Four on one for Auburn, and they don't score. 
Wilson, outstanding defensive player, sprints back, recovers, and gets the block. Uh, you think you got a wide open shot, right? Scott Grayson passes the ball up, comes back, but Aaliyah Wilson rises above it all for that block. They get Thompson another touch, so determined, as you mentioned, to make it get that inside out game going. And Lovey gets tangled up with Wells. You know, both players going in for the basket. They're trying to get the rebound. The uh, officials are going to get together and talk it over here and see if there should be something called here as Wells got the arm up on Levy. Now you see the official stopping play. And he kind of did the twirl of the finger saying we're going to go to the monitor to see if something should be called here. Now, I did not hear a whistle. I didn't, I didn't hear a common foul being called. As and they can do the monitor and see if there's a disqualif disqualifying foul. Uh, one of the things, anytime it's above the shoulder, most of the time they want to review and you look at that arm flailing. Want to take a look at it? You, know, you appreciate the you appreciate the ref wanting to get it right, right? So yeah. take a little moment, go to the monitor. That's fine, but by looking at that, do you see enough to call something on Wells there? It just looked like tangled up and it could be, but it could go both ways. You know, the interesting thing at the player, you just have to kind of go with it and flow with it. Kayla Wells gets mixed up with Levy, so we'll, we'll see what the referee come out, come back with. So they're checking right now to see if this rises to the level of a disqualifying foul on Kayla Wells. They are taking a long look, I must say. with Carla Fountain. I think just tied up. Look, looking at it right there, just with the body, you yeah, get tied up a little bit. It's just the body. Wells had her arm in there, then Levy locks down on the arm and then pulls way back. Gonna call the coaches together here. Well, they're going to call them together and keep them six feet apart. I would certainly hope. Uh, it's like more like four and a half feet, but they're masked up, so that's fine. You know, while you're talking about that, I mean, just thinking about the COVID protocols that every team, not just here in the SEC, but COVID protocols for all teams in the NCAA right now. Gonna call an intentional foul on Kayla Wells, it sounds like. So certainly it didn't rise to the level of disqualifying foul, but even that, like nothing was called. Let me lock down her arm. So that'll send Thompson to the free throw line. So an intentional foul called on Kayla Wells. Thompson with the two free throws. And then Auburn also get the ball back. So you it's have a possession to, Wells, to be able to get four points and or five. Thompson threw it back outside and threw it into the backcourt. And that'll be a backcourt violation, a turnover for Auburn. Number nine for the Tigers. Who trail eighth ranked Texas A&M by one here in the third quarter. Oh, 
Wells, good look inside. Jones and one. And great patience by Texas A&M. They moved around players. They overloaded the one side. They overloaded the left side and forced Auburn, forced the bottom of the zone, Unique Thompson to pull out. Levy had to be down low. And India Jones streaking to the basket is a hard target to stop. Levy picks up her third personal foul. And Jones will head to the free throw line to try to finish off the three-point play. She's second on the all-time rebounding list at Texas A&M. Behind Andrielle Howard, we saw Unique Thompson move up to the number two spot on Auburn's all-time list. Grad student puts A&M on top by four. I think Thompson and India Jones have a lot of similarities. Another Auburn three-pointer. Now seven made threes. Rice now with ten. That's a new career high for her. AM answers right back. And that's Nixon's first point of the game. Three points now, one for four. From even deeper for Elena Rice. That's uh, so interesting. We talked earlier about the first half, and Auburn just kept shooting threes. But I tell you what, the second qu second quarter, the second half, they've come out on fire. Uh, they figured out a way to attack the paint, attack the zone that Texas A&M has, and pass the ball out. And they're finding each other on that three-point line. Rice in her first year with the Tigers. She was the MEAC Rookie of the Year playing for Florida A&M. Got the start here tonight. She's got 13 points. Wells at the free throw line after the second personal foul to Thompson. Uh, first points uh, of the second half for Kayla. Earlier tonight we were talking about Kayla Wells and comparing from last season to this season. One of the things that you appreciate when you watch the Texas A&M team, Kayla Wells was a player that you focused on big time. Kennedy Carter went down, Kayla Wells stepped up last season. I feel like this year, with the surrounding cast that she has and all the players stepping up, new players coming and stepping into different roles, it's given her an opportunity to really, and I don't want to say blend in in a bad way, they have a balanced attack and they make it really hard for teams to guard with all of the weapons that they have. Wells goes to the bench. She's got eight. She averaged 13 a game last year. Good for second on the team. Ten points a game this year, which is four. Thompson for two. Nine point six rebounds now for Unique. Texas a and trying to find a way to get the ball inside, and Sierra Johnson Johnson right post up. On the feed from Alexis Morris back into the game. Good pass to Thompson. She'll finish that. And Thompson does a good job of just riding Sierra Johnson up the lane to allow for that open, that pass. Morris gets called for the carry. Turnover, Texas A&M. Auburn ball down by one when we return. She did go for 22 playing in the MEAC for Florida A&M. But her best performance 
be an SEC play. Coming off nine points against Alabama. Now she's gone for 13, making her fourth start of the season. She's got the basketball, walking across half court. Auburn with a chance to take a lead against eighth-ranked Texas A&M. Already tonight, a couple of top ten teams have gone down. NC State, number two in the country, lost in overtime to Virginia Tech. UConn, number three in the country, lost in a thriller at Arkansas. Number eight, Texas A&M has their hands full against Auburn. Morris explodes in the basket, can't get the layup. Uh, one thing when you look at the SEC or you look at NCAA, just all the team. We have looked at the top 25 team, top 30 team. The question that you ask Coach Blair is, is there anybody that's great right now in the tournament? Is there anybody, any team that you look at it, it's like they're, they're sitting at number one. They've separated themselves from the pack. And he said, honestly, no, there's not, not one team could he name that was up there. So it's interesting when you look at some of the losses that you just talked about. Any given night, based on the team, based on this year just being a different year than normal, any given night, you have an opportunity to win. That was on Wilson, her third. Strong drive, but missing the mark is Rice this time. And here comes Morris again. Take a look at the AP Top 10, as I mentioned, NC State and UConn going down. Louisville ranked number one for the first time in program history. You know, Gary said, you know, when we asked him, how many great teams are there in the Top 10? He said, zero. There's so many competitive games. There isn't a team that's dominating everybody. There are great moments, great players with great potential, but no one has put it all together yet. And the teams that do the little things like boxing out, connecting on out-of-bounds plays, those will all make a big difference. And that's what's going to make this February and March and into the NCAA tournament so exciting because Teams are still building there are still ceilings for these teams to try and reach as Thompson knocks it down from outside I like that move by Thompson right there. She looked around trying to find somebody to pass the ball to And then I think she realized she was open Take a one dribble pull up. That's something that we have not seen a lot of from unique Thompson. Lana Rice couldn't get it. Thompson hustles after it, but stepped out of bounds, and it will be Texas A&M ball. And unique Thompson. This is the move right here. Looks wide open from the three-point line. Sarah Johnson a little bit further back. Take one dribble. That's the versatility. Morris can't score again. It's knocked out of bounds. It'll be... Auburn basketball, as you look at Unique Thompson as a pro, Tamika, how does she project to you? Now, she's never attempted a three-point shot. That's about as close as she's going to come right there. A little rhythm dribble and a step inside. But how do you project her over these next couple years as her career moves on? Well, I, I think she's definitely a player to watch. And if you look at her skill set and what she has accomplished last year, this year, every year we've seen her develop different parts of her game. And you know, we talked to Coach Flo just about what have been the areas that between last season and this season that you have worked on with her. It's been her footwork down low, her patience, and being able to step out and knock down some of those, those open shots that people are leaving her wide open. So I think when she gets that she continues to develop, she's a player that you can tell. The motor that runs in her, she wants to get better. She'll continue to get better. She is always thriving and asking, how can I get better? And she wants to play at the next level. So I think having that desire, having the work ethic to do that, that's just part of it. Well, when you lead the nation in rebounds per game and offensive rebounds per game, I'll give you an indication of that motor, how it's always running. Tonight, Thompson's got 13 points, six rebounds. She's had a tough front court battle tonight against Sierra Johnson and Andrea Jones. The one two combo, that tandem for Texas AM. Wells gives it up. Open look for Pitts. Every time Texas AM overloads the left side, it's hard for the defense, especially the zone, it's hard for them to rotate. Morris 
tracks it down. She's missed a couple on the inside, but even though that might frustrate her, her teammates there to pick her up. That's Jones cleaning it up. 17 and 10 now for India Jones. Another double double for her. Her 11th this year, 37th of her career. And up finding the offense outside and inside. Uh, you got pitched on the three-point line, a player that you know you can't leave. But in another fourth round, you got India Jones always in down low to clean up the guy. I love how effortless sometimes India Jones makes it look. I mean, she we know she hustles. We know how relentless she is. We know that on both sides of the ball, how active she's going to be. But sometimes you just watch her and it's, it's amazing to see how hard she plays. And she doesn't look like it. <laughs> so just to clear up what's happening right now, the foul was called on Wells. It looks like they're going to the monitor to confirm the foul. And it looks like maybe it's going to go against Morris. So Alexis Morris picks up the foul. That's her third. Yeah, the reach in right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good call. Or a good call to go to the monitor to correct the call. Well, I asked you about Unique Thompson. I'll ask you the same thing about N.D. Jones. I mean, she's someone who's got that motor going. Some, a lot of the same things you just said about Unique Thompson, you could say about N.D. Jones. So what about her as you look forward? You know, I put together a mock draft for you, by the way. Oh, this is you. You did this. Thank you. I appreciate that. Or, or yeah. did you get it from ESPN.com? Which one is it? Uh, well, we're one in the same. You know, I like to just be a ghostwriter on these things, but you know, I can I can step up and say it. But number ten for from Texas A&M, Andia Jones. But when you just think of her as her game develops, how does she need to step up her game as Johnson scores on the inside? And I could do this all night. I can go up and right, down these tell. lineups here. But I'm just curious, you know. I just want to I mean, know. I know, and I think you can say a lot of the same things that we just said about Unique Thompson. I think the difference is with India, we're going to need, she's at some point going to have to develop a, a shot, a three-point shot. And it, I don't think it's not that she's capable of it. I just think with this team, it's not really what, what's needed and expected of her. But I just love just watching her on that last play. She got the rebound started the outlet and then she was running down the court in case her teammates didn't score They're produced and she has putting down 13 points right now for the Auburn Tigers yeah unique had two at halftime she had 11 in that third quarter and Dia Jones didn't score in the first quarter at eight points in the second quarter nine in the third quarter she was four for four from the field in the second quarter and again in the third quarter so Turning it up, 17 points, 11 rebounds, helping a &M to an eight-point lead. Good start for Auburn here in the fourth. Kulabali gets her first points in the second half. Morris, tough drive. She came up empty a couple times. She would not be denied on that drive. Oh, well, great heads up play by Morris. And the fact that she has come up empty, but she keeps going really important for this team you know one thing from that third quarter too Tamika was how Auburn it seemed like they kept coming up the court with a chance to go in front yet they could just not get over the hump Sierra Johnson with the rebound right there and then take it away honestly Scott Grayson three on one she goes with the ball up. we have continued to see Auburn in this game in particular, we've continued to see them. They fight. We know they're going to fight. And we know the way, the way that they play. But they have stayed in this game because of their defense. They've stayed in this game. Offensively, they're knocking down shots in the second half that they didn't knock down in the first half. Alexis Morris has played a bunch of minutes here tonight for AM. She's got seven in her 12 minutes. And then steal number seven for Auburn. Sixteen points now for honesty Scott Grayson and another three-pointer knocked down by Destiny Pitts. That's her fourth. Oh, 
Koulibaly ducks through, and the officials are going to have a conversation here to see who the foul is on. You see, honestly, Scott Grayson, her first five games and her last nine games, how she's really elevated her game. Now, Koulibaly is the one who's going to get called for the foul. Well, when you look at honestly, Scott Grayson, Unique Thompson needs somebody else to step up, and we'll go back to the school of Valley charge trying to slide through two players and doesn't get there. Nixon finds a cutting Jones. He needed Jones for two. I'm affecting no look pass right there. Nixon comes to the middle of the paint. Sees India Jones streaks into the basket and makes that pass, but remember talking to Coach Blair, he talked a little bit about trying to design the offense. Like the San Antonio Spurs a few years ago. Scott Grayson on the drive, and Auburn will take the timeout. We'll take it as well with 7.41 to go against Mizzou. Bench points, big part of the game as well. 25 to 4 edge for Auburn, for AM over Auburn. And that was one of the points that we talked about at the beginning of the game. The balanced attack that Texas AM has. They have their starters, of course, but even when the bench comes in, Coach Blair said, I expect them to run, to go faster, and to change the flow of the game. And that's what they've done. The bench has come in and they've played some crucial minutes. Jones and Johnson team up to get Sierra to the free throw line. Levy picks up her fourth personal foul. So she's the first one with four for either side. Rice has three for Auburn. Wilson with three. Uh, Morris Scott with three. Four. Uh, uh, Levy getting five. stuck five. down low with Sierra Johnson. She's trying to go square up, but Sierra Johnson, I mean, she, she's been in this position before. She's really worked hard this season in particular to dominate down low, to make a low, to be a strong low post presence. And I think as you've seen her evolve over the course of the last couple of years, she's really learned how to dominate down there. Two free throws for Johnson. 11-point lead again for a &M, matching their largest. Well, Bali will try a deep three. That is the 30th three-point attempt for Auburn tonight. Jones tried to get it to Johnson, turned it over. That's the 15th turnover for Texas A&M. Auburn can't turn it into points on the other end, and now A&M will slow things down. I feel like in the third quarter, one of the things that made Auburn so successful was making it a, a point to get the ball inside. They've come in the fourth quarter, taken some three-point shots, got a couple steals, but they haven't really gone to unique. Tough drive by Wells, the finish in the foul. Well, it looked like for a moment that Wells is going to have a turnover during that trip down the court. Instead, it ends up with a chance to have a three-point play. Uh, Kayla Wells takes it strong to the basket. Unique Thompson tried to get the block, but ends up getting the body, the face, and everything else. <laughs> it only counts as one foul. Number 14, Taylor Jordan. So that's number three for Unique. She'll head to the bench. Jordan comes back in. Well, it kind of happens quickly, but Johnson and Wells have joined the double-digit group for Texas A&M, so they've got four in double figures yet again. And a foul called on Texas A&M trying to grab the rebound. So this is the ninth time this season, Tamika, that they have had four in double figures. Gary Blair getting that great balance this year. Everyone's got a hand in it feels like they're contributing that's a good sign of a real good happy team too <laughs> when everybody has a chance to score a little or contribute in a little way and get some minutes 
Yeah, I think it's about finding two when you know that the ball at some point will pass through your hand. You don't get stuck on, I have to take the shot. Coach Blair said, I want them to get a shot, but I want them to get the best shot. You might not have the best shot. So make sure you move the ball and great hustle play right there. Right, just using her body, trying to get around the Texas A&M off defense. This is going to have another conference here. And it will be Texas A&M basketball. So the Aggies trying to wear down Auburn. They are now plus 12 in rebound margin. Nixon to Wells. Inside a six to play. Good feed inside. Sierra Johnson took her a split second to gain control. But once she does down there, it's usually lights out. 12 points now for Sierra. Uh, Sierra Johnson, if you just watch her on any offensive play, she never stopped working. And she keeps working and working until she gets the right position and or gets the ball. Speaking of working, on the offensive glass, Kulabali. Jordan Nixon, oh wow. We've her do that a couple times tonight when she dribbles coast to coast through the defense, literally put the dribble, slide through and takes it to the basket or make that nice little dish pass. Yeah, that's nice right there, Jordan Nixon. Number five, Jordan Nixon is you too. That's the thing we've seen with her this season. Not afraid to take to the basket, get some contact. Definitely one of the bigger guards that we've seen. So being able to use her body and get through and bang down low, she is definitely not afraid of that. Scott Grayson oh, rattles home Grayson. another three. That is her fourth three-pointer tonight. Plenty of time when you're going against this Auburn team. See, they press, they are able to get steals, and that's what gets them going. Foul called on uh, Auburn. Auburn. That will get us to a timeout. 440 to go in the fourth 11-point game at Auburn. Steps inside the half-court line, not behind the half-court line, a couple steps inside the half-court line. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. <laughs> Remember the challenge they had on social media a couple years ago, and you literally threw the ball up and you would turn around before the ball goes in because you knew it went in. Coach Blair is bringing it. Sometimes some things just have to come back in style. That's all I'm going to say. But the chicken wing is my favorite. I was over here doing it with them. Come on, Coach Blair. I got you. I don't know if that's like a dance or something. I don't really know. He may have been checking to see if his labrum was torn. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just... <laughs> oh, okay. He would have been fine if he's on. That's right. That's why he probably does it on the radio. I'm just speaking from experience, you know. 73-62 off the scramble. Here comes AM. It was a very slow start for Blair's team from the field. Three for 20 from the field, but since then, 23 of 33. They have found their offense, and again, that bench has been a big part of it, scoring 25 of their 73 points. Well, it's been that in points in the paint. They have 38 points in the paint compared to Auburn, 24, but they've been patient. You see Johnson working down low right there at last possession, but they found a way. India Jones down low, getting it to the basket. Alexis, more, I mean, they different people have done different things. Thompson turns into the double. That's Jones and Johnson teaming up to make it so tough for Unique Thompson. And we've seen that more than once here in this game tonight as AM has turned their attention on Unique. 
Well, it's interesting though, because with Auburn, you gotta be somewhat happy about the way other players have stepped up to play tonight. Kayla Wells did that layup down low, but you know, you look at Auburn, you look at this Auburn team, and we talked about this earlier, but coming off of all the adversity that they started off the SEC conference play with the COVID missed game, different players coming in and out. And tonight I feel like being able to see a little bit more of a flow of what this Auburn team is capable of against a pretty good, I mean, Texas A&M is a, is a pretty good team. Pat will earn a trip to the free throw line for the Tigers. Foul call by Texas A&M number 31, India Jones. That's her second and the team second. So Kia Pat Kia will Pat start two, two. here today as she returns to play. And both teams have used a ton of players as well. We talked about the bench points for A&M. A reminder, Coming up next, SEC Now team will have highlights, interviews, analysis here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Alyssa, Steffi, and Drea will go through the Arkansas win over UConn. Chelsea Dungy with 37 points. Amber Ramirez with 22. Most points scored by an opponent against UConn. Not even Tamika Katchen scored 37 for Tennessee against UConn, although she tried. Balanced attack. Balance right. attack. <laughs> That's going to be an offensive foul called on Honesty Scott Grayson. Foul is going to be an offensive foul against number 23, Honesty Scott Grayson. Jordan Nixon get fired up over there a little bit. Honesty Gray, Scott Grayson tried to come down. Nixon, great job. Holds her ground and gets the charge. Yeah, she's taking a couple of charges tonight. Auburn keeps the pressure going in the backcourt. South Carolina with a win over Mississippi State on the road. Mississippi State has not played a lot. That's their only game between January 17th and February 4th. Zia Cook at 19 for South Carolina. Tennessee squeaked it out. Renaya Davis with 21. They're now 5-1 in the SEC. Number 40, Sierra Johnson. For two. As Sierra Johnson scores. Timeout is called. Timeout taken by Texas 13 State. Point game. So Davis with 20 rebounds in that win against Kentucky. That was very impressive for Tennessee. Mizzou knocking off Florida as well tonight. Deja Williams had another good game. 16 points. Asia Blackwell had 14 points. 16 rebounds. So all the highlights, analysis, and more coming up when we're done with Auburn and Texas A&M. There's another double, making a triple against Unique Thompson. Is that all you got? Why don't you throw four at me? I'll still score. <laughs> Give me one more. <laughs> that turnaround jump shot for her, turning into her go-to with all these double teams. Double, triple, whatever it takes. 145 to go here in the fourth. Nixon will drain a three. Number five, Jordan Nixon for three. Like a player is limping, it's Elena Rice. Rice with 13 points, five assists, and with a game like that, she doesn't want to leave. Yeah, it looks like she just came down on her yeah, own player's foot and tweaked it a little bit. Sometimes you can just walk it on. Well, she did a good job getting the start for the fourth time <laughs> this season. She'll leave with the 13 points. Robinson will go into the game. Scott Grayson. Ooh, that is a three-point attempt. For Unique Thompson, oh, her first oh, take, her first make, her first <laughs> she knows <take>. it. <laughs> she must have heard us talking about her, that's all. Uh, so we need her to shoot some threes, she stepped out. Figured probably everybody else is shooting threes in the game. Might as well step out and knock down a shot. Now, I would quit right there and say my first <laughs> 
career three-point attempt win in offset, but something tells me she, she's like, oh, I liked how that felt. Did you hear that? It, it ripped through the net a little differently from that far out. A hundred percent. <laughs> 18 points for Thompson, 21 for Scott Grayson. Final 30 seconds of regulation. So this was a tight one. Both teams are struggling from the field in the first half. Six point game at halftime, one point game for a long stretch in that third quarter. Jones with an easy one. There she goes, always streaking to the baskets here. Johnson knew where India Jones was going before she even got there. It's almost like they're, they're used to doing this. They played quite a few games together. Jones gets one more rebound, so she'll finish with 23 points and 12 rebounds. And it's a win for Texas A&M, 84-69. The final, they are perfect 15 for 15 all time against Auburn. Your thoughts on the Aggies pulling it out late? You know, I think they figured out a way to attack the basket and get it down low. India Jones can't say enough about her. She stepped in when they needed her. Well stepped up. Johnson came through down the stretch. and.